Dankjewel. Dank je. Shall we open it? Okay, so let's go over some information for this telescope. The tube diameter is 235 millimeters, which is nine and a quarter inches in diameter. And the length of the tube is 920 millimeters, which is 62.2 inches. And it weighs 8.8 .8 kilograms. So it is quite a sizable scope compared to some of the previous telescopes I've unboxed on this channel. Compared to my Heritage 150P, it captures 77% more light. So this is gonna be excellent for visual deep sky. It's got a fast F5 focal ratio, which means that it's actually gonna be really good for deep sky imaging as well. And it's got eight, because of the eight inches, 200 mil of aperture, it's gonna have plenty of resolution for the planets. So this is the 200p, but there's also a 200 PDS model for various sizes, which is said to be the better option for deep sky astrophotography because it's got the dual speed focus on it and the tube's slightly shorter, which makes uh, attaching a camera and reaching focus a little bit more convenient. So there's a little bit of a misunderstanding that that means that you can't do deep sky imaging with the P version. Now that was actually the case in the old days with the original sky watchers, the, the old light, I had a light blue version of this about 10 years ago or so and I needed the Barlow lens to reach focus with my, I think I had a Canon 1100D at the time when they were new out, so a little while ago. And I was really disheartened and I didn't keep that telescope for long because it didn't reach focus and I wanted to do deep sky imaging. But since then I've used a Black Diamond 150P for imaging and I'm fairly sure I dabbled with one of my previous Black Diamond livery 200p's so I'm fairly confident that you can reach focus with the 200p as well as the 200 PDS. Let's have a little look down the the business end. Okay so can you see that? So what we've got there initially are secondary support spider veins and they are made to be really as thin as possible so they increase contrast and reduce the effects of diffraction spikes. I think they're 0.5 millimeters thick, so very thin. So what else do we get in the box? Well, we get the usual paperwork, which we'll throw to one side, because I never really look at that. And we've got another box of goodies here, so let's open that up and have a look, if I can get in it. Okay, so because we've got a two inch focus on this telescope, there's a two inch to 1.25 inch adapter. We've got a two times Barlow lens, which means that with the supplied modified Acromatma eyepieces, the Super 10 and the Super 25, that will give us a combination of 4E, 8T, 100 and 200 times magnification with this telescope. We've also got quite a considerable size finder scope with this, which you can also add an adapter to make it into a guide scope. So not only are we getting a telescope here, we're getting a very large finder, nine times 50. So 50 mil objective on there, nine times magnification, but you can also use it as a guide scope and it's a reasonably appropriate le focal length guide scope for this telescope, which is a thousand millimeter focal length telescope. 
Now we need some way of attaching that to the telescope and that's what's in here. So this is the finder scope. This is the finder scope bracket. So that will attach via a shoe to the telescope and the finder fits in there. And then we've got a two inch extension tube as well if you want to use two inch eyepieces or whatever. So going back to the focuser, two inch Crayford focuser, very coarse. These rubbers do perish eventually and fall off, but that's not a problem really. It's just a basic focuser, but it's two inches so you can use two inch eyepieces and that's great. Now, the one thing I don't like about it, even though it's a budget item, is these two screws for attaching accessories that kind of dig in and scratch up anything you put in there. So I've ordered an Astro Essentials um, compression ring fitting, which is about 29 pounds. So that's on its way, hopefully. Hopefully I'll get that at some point. So I'll unscrew this and just screw on the, uh, the new one, which won't scratch up anything I put in there. Okay, so we're gonna to need to attach the finder scope next. So what we need to do is find the rubber O-ring that came with the finder scope, roll that onto a little, you'll see a little groove halfway down. I don't know if you can see that. There's a groove around there, slide it onto there. And it's gonna pivot on that whilst it's sitting inside the this uh, bracket. So next we need to pop that into there. You can see how there's another groove, a thicker groove. These screws locate on that thicker groove. So if we pop that in there, pull on the silver one because it's spring loaded and that should pop down. Oh, hold on, getting cramp. Ooh. That should pop down onto there. Let's try that. There we go. So now that rubber seal is sitting all the way around there. And then we can make adjustments to these screws once it's attached to align it with your object. So these two screws there. Let's pop that on the telescope now. There we have it. Now focal length 1000 millimeters. Uh, if you've got a crop sensor DSLR, you're looking at fitting in objects like the Trapezium Galaxy. And if you got your orientation right, I reckon you'd get the Leo triplet in there okay. But you'd struggle with things like the Rosette. I don't think you'd have a chance of getting Andromeda or the full extent of Orion in. So it is for those kind of medium size objects. To use this for deep sky imaging, you're gonna want a coma corrector with any large sensor because these are fast curved mirrors and they will have they will show coma towards the edge. The spherical aberration has been taken care of by having a parabolic mirror so the light from the edge of the mirror will reach the same focus as the light from the center of the mirror so it's good that it's parabolic but the coma is present unless you get a coma corrector. You can get a Skywatch coma corrector which actually acts as a 0.9 reducer, taking it down to f4.5. And a bar to do a very good one as well, which doesn't have any reducing factor, but I think there's reports that there's slightly less glare off um, bright stars with the optical elements. I think the Skywatch is very good for the money. It's affordable and it does have a reducing effect, but I think off bright stars, there is a little bit of glare from the elements. So the Bard is probably the better one to go for. You can also get the photo visual coma corrector. So you can make this into a, a flat field visual instrument. Out the box, you've got two eyepieces. You've got the, you've got the 10 millimeter and the 25 millimeter modified Acromat eyepieces and the two times Bardo len lens giving you combinations of anywhere from 40 times magnification all the way up to 200 times magnification. So everything out the box you've got all your magnifications covered for visual 
and you've got the possibility of upgrading to two inch eyepieces thanks to the two inch focuser. So yeah, it's got everything you need. The, the rail on it is a very fetching anodized green Vixen style dovetail, which is the most commonly used one. You could put a los thicker Losmondi one on there if you wish to quite easily just by undoing these screws there and there. And then you, these rings are adjustable so you can turn the tube round to reach the focus if needs be. But I think that's pretty much it for now. So I look forward to you joining me hopefully on the next video where I'll get this set up in the observatory and hopefully with a bit of luck get first light. Okay, take care.